On this episode, we're traveling to the Russian Far East in pursuit of one of the most sought after bear species, the white lip bear. Living in the rainforest region along the mighty Amur River, these majestic bears with the classic white chevron on their chest are thriving in the same dense forest habitat that's also home to the mighty and rare Amur tiger. Among the vast dense forests along the China-Russia border, the Russian government has set aside millions of acres of habitat to protect the unique wildlife that lives there. Managing these mountains and rainforests on a sustainable use model allows hunters to take a small number of deer and bear from the area each year. The sale of licenses and employment of guides and staff brings much needed revenue to the parks and the poor local rural economy. The revenue also helps discourage poaching while helping maintain a healthy environment for the highly endangered Amur tiger that also calls this area home. The tigers of the world are under intense poaching pressure throughout their range. And this is due to the false fairy tale in the Chinese culture that tiger bones and other parts of these magnificent beasts somehow have magical medical qualities. It's not true, it's never been proven, and this myth needs to end now. Amur bears and white lip bears both compete with the tigers for many of the same food sources. So reducing the bear numbers through legal hunting has proven to have a positive effect on the rare tiger survival rate. After our 28 hour travel time, we were picked up at the airport by Lynx Wild Safari's host, Tony Tonchev. Tony told us we needed to pick up some uh, supplies before we made the long drive that still waited for us to get to the hunting area. The last time I was in the Ukraine, uh, yeah. we, uh, we have all the bug sprays and everything. Yeah. Yeah. This is the section we've been looking for. Because sometimes it gets really hot, dry, and dusty out there, Tony's saying, so we want to make sure that we're supplied with enough goodies that we don't die of dehydration while we're out there. So. There is Miller Drops. Wow, we can't have that. Okay. We can come here to drink American beer. No, we don't love American beer. You know the usual Baltica? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. good. That's good. That's good. Don't ever take Baltica zero because it's zero alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point of that. Yeah. We'll take Baltica three. Brought to you by Cryptech the only battlefield of backcountry camo in the world. Now we gotta get two pounds in a one pound bag. There's always a lot of driving involved when getting to these remote areas. But on this trip, we were in for something completely new. Looks like they're having a party or something. So check this out. Here comes a Soviet fighter buzzing over top of us, right behind me. See him coming right there? Watch this. He's gonna blow us out. Landing on the ground. Uh, now that's something you don't see in Kansas every day. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Now we had to switch all of our gear to a four-wheel drive vehicle for the last and final leg of our journey. Now we're four-wheeling. We got about an hour of this and we're going to be in camp. It's nice to be back out in the countryside and out of airports and paved roads. I was just doing the math. I think we've been 41 hours now. But we're here. 
Our camp for the hunt was a combination of tents and rustic cabins that the guides had hewn from the forest. The weather was cooperating, and everyone in camp was excited to get out and go bear hunting. We're heading to a spot today where we're going to ride the four wheelers in. It's about an hour. It's and one spot here. that's got both the brown bear, the Amur brown bear, and the white lip black bear. So there's a chance we're going to get one or the other. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, but the bears have been coming out in the middle of the day, which is kind of weird because usually they're always in the first thing in the morning or late in the evening. So weather's great. All the conditions are just right for bear hunting. And if they're not great for bear hunting, they're great for human beings to be sitting there in weather like this. Yes! It's not a job, it's an adventure. Taking a break from the ride, the guides needed to fill up the water jugs so they could use it to mix it up with the bait once we got to the tree stand. and the old fish guts and stuff. Apparently bears love it. <laughs> old fish guts, let's just say. But, you know, one man's stench is another bear's lunch, so. The method of hunting in this rainforest is sitting in a blind and waiting for the bears to come into a bait. It's so thick that it's impossible to spot and stalk these wily bears in this habitat, so you've got no choice but to get into a blind and you wait. And you wait. And you wait some more. And you wait some more. And you wait. Finally, late that day, a bear emerged from the forest, but too dark to film.
Last night when we left this bait, there was a bear came in, but it was too dark, we couldn't shoot. So we're going back in today and we're gonna see if he's still there. Or if, it, if he's there, we've gotta sneak in and we'll try and whack him as we go in. We don't wanna run him off, so the guys are ready. Let's go see what's happening. The bear had fed quite a bit, so now we just had to be patient. A family of Amur brown bears showed up, and I had a license for one, but there's no big male with them. Just this sow and these huge cubs that were with her. Check out the big round ears on these bears. So the guides decided to take us to a different blind the next day because they said the female brown bear and her cubs had probably ate all the bait anyhow, and no white-lipped bear would come to the bait as long as the much bigger and meaner brown bears were still there. To explain how rare this footage is, none of the guides in camp have ever seen a tiger in the flesh and they live here year round. And no one that they know of has ever even filmed an Amur tiger in the wild before. After seeing the tiger, walking out in the dark that night was about as scary of a situation as you can get. The next day, the guide said, since there's a tiger in the vicinity, we need to move again to a different location because all these bears are afraid of the tigers. Uh, really, you think? He snuck up on this new bait to see if there was a bear on it, but he's been here. You can see on the drum where he's been all over it, but he, uh, he's not here right now. That's a good sign. So we're gonna go up in this. I stand up here and wait on him and see if he comes back. The guy said that they saw a Himalayan black bear on this thing. White lip bears, they call them here. So that'd be cool. A big old sow with a new cub showed up and sniffed around. How fun is it to watch a bear cub? Then we found out why they call it a rainforest. In the early morning, the guide sent me to an old shack at another new location. We were seeing critters, but just not the right one. But sooner or later, the odds had to turn in our favor. We tried to do 
something different. We got up early this morning, came out here about 4.30, and, you know, got to change it up. The mosquitoes were really bad in this spot, but uh, one came to the bait, but he just came out really quick, got behind that barrel, and we couldn't see him to really judge him or anything, but he just didn't look that big. And then when he went to leave, I was trying to get a look at him. He just hesitated for a second, but then he took off, so he wasn't running because he was afraid or anything. I think he just got full and he just took off, so fingers crossed for tonight. We're hoping that now that the rain has ceased and the sun's come out, that these barrels will be out moving again. You know, they don't call me last minute Al for nothing. So I'm still super optimistic that it's about to be showtime. Yes! Back that afternoon to the same shack, that's when the rains and the mosquitoes came back in full force. rain came again, but after an hour, it eased up, and finally we started to see some movement. Look at the size of this thing. This one is a pig. Look at those feet, huh? Look at that, huh? Like a black bear in a lot of ways, but then they've got this big, huge chevron right in the middle of their chest. Look at that. Isn't that something? Holy smokes. And these ears, this is the part that's just amazing to me. Because this forest is so thick, they use their hearing more than any of their other senses to get around in here. And it's kind of a unique area for this Amur area because the brown bears have these big ears, the black bears. But look at that, it's like Mickey Mouse. 
typically with a bear, you'd be looking for small ears, you know, big head, that kind of a thing. But like our back bears, these ears are off to the side, which is good. You know, they come down as they get older. But man, oh man, what a tremendous bear. Old, worn off teeth, broken, just the kind we want to get out of this area. Come on, <laughs> all the way to Russia, in the area where the tigers are at. That's what's incredible to me about this species is that here this bear is living right in the same environment with these huge tigers, the Amur tigers. Oh my gosh. Thanks to all the gang at Lynx Wild Safaris for putting this together for us. Another great trip. I just can't say enough about how the whole trip has gone. It's just been a true adventure. Now we got a little skinning job ahead of us, and we got to get him out of here.